Hello everybody. Today we are tackling this giant five piece ensuite bathroom. Now my clients were getting up there in age and as such they wanted to make some modifications to their house to better suit their needs. And as such we're going to be splitting this room in half making one side a laundry room and then the other half a four piece with a giant barrier free shower. This is a really good reason why you need to tape up your mirror. As you can see here we got the seven years of bad luck. So the tape just kind of keeping us safe throughout this. And you'll notice another person. That's right. This is Sebastian, who's now a part of the team. And since this video, we've done maybe three, four projects. And having him on the team has been incredibly valuable. Uh, doing this as a one-man kind of show was just getting to be too much, even for someone as young as myself. So really glad to have him on, on this project and for the future ones. When it comes to these big corner tubs, you have a 50-50 shot, I'd say, of it being nice or terrible. And in this case, it was really well constructed, which of course means getting it out to be a real pain. Now we just went ahead and smashed that tub right on out. There was just no shot of getting it out in one piece, or at least not in any time-sensitive way. And that's something that I get a lot of comments about. Guys, this is demolition, okay? I am sorry that we destroy some things that you might think are salvageable but no one here is getting compensated for saving them. To get things out in one piece in a reusable state takes four or five times the amount of time to get it out that way. So yeah, oftentimes you're gonna see us just taking the hammer or the sawzall to things, and that is how renovations work. For the tubs around here, just kind of smashing all of the tiles off to expose the wood beneath, and then with that out, can kind of get the sawzall with a long wood blade on it and cut it into smaller pieces. That way you can just kind of rock them out of place, throw them in the bin as one big piece. Before continuing on with the project, I just want to give thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't heard of it, AG1 is a nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. Through a science-driven formulation of 75 ingredients, AG1 supports the brain, gut, and the immune system. As you may be able to imagine, home renovations are hard work, but by drinking AG1, I've found a boost in my energy levels and have been more sustained throughout the day. Since starting with AG1, I've felt more focused and less stressed, which helps a great deal on these types of projects. On top of this, AG1 helps with nutrient replenishment, as it contains a broad spectrum of micronutrients and phytonutrients to keep the body nourished all day, every day. One of my favorite features of AG1 is just how effortless it is. Drinking AG1 has quickly become an essential part of my daily routine. By simply mixing together 8 to 12 ounces of water with a scoop or a travel packet of your AG1, you can very quickly get the drink and it's ready to go. Take it here, give it a good shake. And it tastes great. So go to drinkag1.com slash working with Walken to get started on your order. AG1 is going to give my community a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 plus K2 and five AG1 travel packets with your first purchase. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Removing the floors with an SDS. Uh, since this video, we've actually kind of leaned towards a three foot pry bar. And I think for those of you watching, if you wanted to do this yourself, so the three foot pry bar is going to be the better option just from a cost perspective. Uh, but of course, both methods work just fine. Once the demo is done, of course, and then moving on to the mechanical side of things. But before we can do that, we need to open up the floors so that we can move everything. Now in this project, pretty much every single item was relocated. And this is kind of a drawing of the existing layout that we went in with. And here's the proposed changes. So you can see we got the one side with a washer and a sink, a utility sink, and then the other side with a two-piece vanity, a toilet, and a larger walk-in shower. So to make this happen, pretty much all of the plumbing needs to be reworked. You can see us here. The toilet is going to have to be extended down a little further. And on top of that, because of our client's needs, they wanted that walk-in curbless shower. So the steps here are, of course, opening up the subfloor to be able to recess it. And I will be coming out with a more in-depth video on this exact topic if it's something you want to learn how to do. So with this drain situation, we're taking our existing toilet drain 
and extending it out further to get to the new toilet location. And then actually just coming off of that with our shower drain as well. Both of them being vented up in the new wall that we're building where they'll later be ran into the attic and tied into the existing vent that's up there. And then this here is just the shower drain. Just bring it on over to where our new giant walk-in shower is going to be. And this is just a quick look at the rough end for the laundry. Uh, so you can see we came off with a two inch drain, uh, new two inch drain from down below. And then we went up to our washer outlet box there. And anytime we're doing this, my, my biggest priority is to close up the floors as quickly as possible. Obviously with having open floors, you have a hazard, right? That's uh, you don't want to be falling through the ceilings. So cutting up the new plywood and just securing it all down. And then new PEX lines, as you can see, our vanity changed locations too. So just running these PEX lines below the subfloor and tying them in to what was the old shower lines. And then building the walls to separate the room. So anytime I can build a wall on the floor, I'm going to do so. It's just going to be a lot quicker, a lot nicer that way. And then putting them up, making sure everything's plumb and level before securing it to the floor and joists above. And then with this back wall for the shower here, we're actually going with a four foot long niche, which was really cool to do. I personally am a huge fan of niches. I think they're just kind of like the, the central focal point when you look at a shower, especially with one like this, where we got some accent tiles and some LED lights in it. So really cool. Just roughing out this, this opening for the niche. I always rough it out larger than the actual size two. That way it can be cut out later and established on a kind of a grout line. As this is a bathroom, it means half inch green board for all of the walls. Uh, I typically just use this everywhere. Uh, when it's a bathroom, you know, it, it's realistically in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much more expensive to go with green board than regular drywall. And you have the added benefit of that mold resistive properties. Next comes the waterproofing, of course, my go-to, the Schluter Curdy membrane. Really, really simple installation here. Just troweling out with a V-notch trowel on the walls using all set, uh, Schluter's all set thin set, and then just putting on those pre-cut sheets onto the wall, collapsing those ridges, getting it nice and tight, getting all the air out from beneath the membrane. Once the walls are done is when I move on to the floor. And really in, in this day, I'm just kind of putting the drain in the pan down itself because as far as the corners and all that waterproofing goes, I need the Dietra on the floor to be done. As this is a curbless shower, we want the waterproof extended out to the floor as well. To get a truly seamless barrier-free shower here, we do have to build up the rest of the bathroom floor a little bit as well. So this is just quarter inch ply. It's being glued and screwed down. And then on top of that, we're going to be applying Dietra heat, which is also a quarter inch thick, giving us a total of half inch of raised floors here. Now, this is really the only good way to go about doing this. Unfortunately, it does mean that the bathroom floors are going to be slightly taller than the bedroom outside of it. Uh, but we will show you kind of our solution to that. It's just kind of a custom built transition strip uh, that worked out to be really nice. Also, of course, we got the heated floors, which I always love to see. Um, is this a luxury item? Yeah, sure. But uh, in my opinion, uh, if the day ever comes in which I can own a house, I will have these, I assure you. More curdy band along all of the seams where the Dietra meets the pan itself. Really crucial that you get that done. And then obviously all of the corners as well. And even the seams outside of the shower pan a little bit where the Dietra heat mat meets Dietra heat mat. Uh, just kind of making sure everything a little bit outside of the pan is waterproofed as well. Because look, I mean, the curdy band itself, you have it. Uh, you have the thin set, might as well just go a little above and beyond here. And this is where I was so glad to have Sebastian. Uh, if you can believe it, this guy actually enjoys mudding. I know, a bit of a red flag, but hey, if I don't have to do it. <laughs> so this is just Sheetrock 45, pre-filling all of the larger gaps and cracks. And then after that has a chance to set up going around with the uh, all-purpose mud and getting the taping done and then you know over the next couple days getting the rest of the coats done just feathering everything out before the final sand and then at that point be ready for prime and paint
In regards to the floors, I actually did the rest of the bathroom floor first before doing the shower floor. The reason for this is that in the shower, we're going to be using a small hexagon mosaic tile. And out here we have, as you can see, these larger 24 inch rectified tiles. What that means is that these have very straight and perfect edges to them so that by building out this floor first, uh, once this has a night to set up the next day, I can come in and when I do my mosaic tiles in the shower, I have an established square and straight line to work with so that when I cut my mosaic tiles, I can have those sharp cut lines uh, kind of polished off and then butted up towards these larger tiles. And I have a really clean look at the end of it because when we think about the mosaic being inserted, the one cut edge along both of our bathroom floor is going to be exposed. So we really want that to appear as clean and as perfect as possible. And when it comes to the installation of these, I'm just using a half inch square notch trowel with 1 16th grout lines. We got the wedge system going in there. You can see I have a suction cup tool to help with the installation. I find that any tile larger than 12 by 24 having a suction cup is really going to make it a lot easier. And uh, we also got the floor register there, which we did a custom, it was kind of like a water jet cut tileable floor register, which is really cool to see. This hexagon mosaic works really well with the white tiles outside. Uh, just a really nice look in my opinion. So I got the V-notch trowel going down. Want to keep the thin set relatively low here because with these mosaics, if you use too much thin set and you're, you're installing them, you're going to have that thin set seep out of the grout lines. And because there's so many grout lines, your cleanup is going to take forever because we do need room for the grout to sit in. So you just want to make sure you're always using the appropriate size trowel for this kind of stuff. Moving on to the walls here, got that first row of tile cut in half. Classic tile manufacturers refusing to make tiles an appropriate size for eight foot ceilings. So to avoid a sliver cut at the top, just take the first row, cut it in half. And then that way, the last row will also be a half tile as well. Um, you know, when I used to do this, I used to just rock that sliver cut. But after doing this, uh, yeah, no, the half tile is just a better look for sure. <laughs> so it's kind of what we're going with now. And any time we have a tile with those kind of veining flowing through them in the print, I always just try to keep those veins flowing in the same direction. So it's going to look the nicest. And then once I get one wall done, that's when I put in the tile profile along the edge. You can just slide it right on in after the fact. And also that we have that first, uh, that first wall of tile done. That way, if you look right about at my shoulder level, we have that one grout line established. So that I can shoot a laser along that grout line and cut out this niche. That way, the top of the niche will have that grout line flowing through it. It's going to be the cleanest look, in my opinion. And this is just a 28 inch and 20 inch Schluter Curdy niche, uh, kind of just siliconed together and then waterproofed at the seam uh, because they don't make a 48 inch niche, if you can believe it or not. With this wall, just the same premise as the first one, we got that laser establishing our level for the first row of tiles you need a laser if you're going to be doing this okay just go out and get one um if your first row is off your tiling is going to be horrible it's not going to look good because the more you go up the more any imperfections will start to show and when you're working with something with like a 1 16th grout line you know a 1 64th of an inch is a big deal right so trying to get it all perfect and uh be careful as you can see here i got a little too handsy with my tile and actually cracked it uh so I exchanged some words with the tile, let it know how I felt, and then went and cut a new piece, got that sorted, and kept going. With the niche being so big, it meant that we're going to have a full tile overhanging it. And gravity is not going to like us doing that, so the solution here was to take these clamps. And actually, a lot of clamps are reversible, in case you were unaware. So just reverse these clamps, and then had it support that one middle tile. We are able to level it all off, and then once you get those wedges in there, it's going to become a lot sturdier as well. And then kind of continuing on and then giving that a chance to set up uh, to strengthen it so that tile doesn't fall down. When it comes to tiling niches, I have a pretty standard order of operations. And that's going to be the back, then the bottom, and then the top, and then the sides. And this is just going to provide kind of the easiest installation, or at least that I find. So 
with that back we just kind of got that nice accent tile going in there and then we slid in an aluminum channel at the top you can kind of see for the led lighting which we have our low voltage wire poked out right beside the bottom tiles being given a slight pitch in towards the drain and then we got these tile profiles cut with a chop saw with a metal blade to give them those nice miters and everything just using those little red wedges everywhere we can to get the appropriate grout spacings and get those miters nice and clean with each other this is kind of the tape light it's just a 4000k uh, water rated tape light it's got those factory wires on so what i do is i just keep those and i use these little butt splices to crimp the low voltage wire to the wires off of the led tape light and then once i have that i can use the adhesive that comes on it to slide it into that channel and then the last step is just to put in a little diffuser. I usually just get them on Amazon half inch plastic diffuser and just cover that on up. For the grout, going with Laticrete Silver Shadow, my go to. Nice light gray. Want to avoid white. White gets grimy and gross. And once that all has a chance to set up, moving on to the priming and painting process. This is always the part in the project where, you know, things finally seem to have paid off because before this, you spend how many days with things just not looking great? And then all of a sudden, one day, things really start to come together. Siliconing all of our change of planes. I will come out with a little video on how I go about doing this because I know it is something a lot of people struggle with. And then the same exact grout carried onto the floor tiles. Again, this is a barrier-free shower, so we want everything to be really seamless and just flow nicely. When it comes to the electrical, that's my you know wall sconces, my mirrors, my receptacles, towel warmers, what have it. Typically, in, in most cases, what I like to do is just bury the wires in the stud cavities. That way, once I have the vanity in and everything established, kind of have a talk with the homeowner and figure out exactly where they want all of their fixtures. This way, we can just make sure everything's perfectly symmetrical uh, and it just kind of works out best, or at least that's what I find. And again, got this beautiful towel warmer. Uh, the clients spared no expenses when it came to these nice items, which I just love to see. Getting our casing up in one piece, we got that two-part glue, so we just kind of built it beforehand and then just brad nail into place. I love that glue. Makes your miters so clean. And the bidet toilet. I love it. <laughs> this one actually needed to be bolted directly to the floor uh, instead of the, the flange as most toilets do. So just a grinder with a small uh, quarter-inch drill bit on it and getting those, those bolts into the floor and then securing the whole thing. This mosaic was in natural stone, so it had to be sealed. And we went with a glossy sealer. So did three coats of this to give it a little bit of a sheen to match all of the surrounding tiles. And then Sebastian actually made these custom transition pieces just beautiful. Made from a table saw and an orbital sander, just a piece of oak stained to match the floors. And there we have it. If you enjoyed the video, if it's not too much trouble to ask, if you could maybe leave a like or a dislike, comment, subscribe, whatever you can do, I would greatly appreciate it. Now I realize my shirt says Toronto. However, due to demand, I've had to shrink kind of the area of service. So if you're located in the Mississauga or surrounding areas, my information will be down below so you can contact me. And while I didn't get a precise cost breakdown for this project specifically, just as a rough number, this was about 30 to 35 grand US all in or 40 to 45 grand Canadian. And it took 15 days, two guys. This does include the laundry room, which is just on the other side. And while well, didn't really showcase the actual work being done in this video, just to get a little look at what the final product there was, just nice and simple. Uh, it's a small space, but it serves a very practical purpose. My name is Liam Walken. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a beautiful day.